The original Roller Coaster Tycoon is a near-perfect game in my opinion, as it's a great balance of simulation gameplay that's wrapped in an environment that promotes creativity. It's quite simply a game that appeals to almost every kind of player, and I know I spent countless hours on my family computer with it as a kid. I even still have my original copy. The thing is, while I believe that many people will agree that Roller Coaster Tycoon is a classic PC game, I don't think a lot of people realize just how much of an achievement it truly is within the industry. A lot of work went into the development of this one game, and with the exception of some art and music, it was all essentially done by a single person in only two years, Chris Sawyer. Now games being primarily developed by a single person isn't an unheard of concept, but Roller Coaster Tycoon simply takes it to a completely different level in two major ways. The first is through authenticity, as Sawyer traveled to countless different amusement parks across both Europe and the United States during this time, in which he conducted research on the fundamentals that comprise these amusement parks, analyzing everything from the way that common patrons would visit the parks to the very economic factors. This allowed Sawyer to create a kind of simulation game that was truly genuine in the ways that the player would run their individual parks. However, while that undeniably displays a degree of dedication that Sawyer had, there's one other thing that you may not be aware of that makes Roller Coaster Tycoon such an accomplishment. The way it was programmed. You see, 99% of Roller Coaster Tycoon was written in a programming language called x86 assembly, which is utterly insane if you know what that entails. But for those who don't, I want to demonstrate just why this is such a feat in itself. Now, we all know that all video games are made of code in some way. They tell a computer to do a series of instructions in a particular order, which will convey what you see on the screen. However, there are several different kinds of languages that syntactically make up that code that you write. And the language that you choose to write an application in will likely affect how you achieve your desired end product. Most modern games are written in languages that you may have actually heard of in passing, such as C++, C Sharp, or Java. While not necessarily easy to pick up and learn, these specific languages are designed in such a way to abstract certain aspects of computers and make it easier for us as humans to read. Take this small snippet of code as an example. Even if you don't understand entirely what's going on behind the scenes here, a human can read this and probably get a decent understanding of what's happening. We put the number 2 into the num1 variable, the number 4 into the num2 variable, and then add them together, while putting the sum, which would be 6 in this case, into answer. This is a large reason why languages like C++ are used so much in video games and software development in general. Human readability. It's so much easier to write code when the language's logic is easy to follow mathematically, and if you make a mistake when coding in one of these languages, you can much more easily trace back what may have gone wrong. x86 assembly, however, the language that Chris Sawyer wrote Roller Coaster Tycoon in, does not fall into this category of languages. Something like C++ is what we call a high-level language. It's designed to make abstractions for the sake of convenience for the programmer, when x86 assembly is what we call a low-level language. It's the closest way you can interact with the hardware of a computer itself through code, as you are directly telling the machine where to put your data. Before we see how that looks, let's go back and compare our snippet of code from before. Remember how we clearly put the numbers we wanted into the variables num1 and num2? Well, x86 assembly makes this a much more involved process. Let's look back at what that code snippet would be if we wrote it in x86 assembly. This is the equivalent of that. You see those symbols like RBP? Well, those are what we call registers, which refers to an actual segment on your CPU. So, as a result, going from C or C++ to assembly is the difference of putting numbers into a variable that you can personally name, to manually loading it directly into a data location. As you can imagine, expanding a process like this over the course of a much more complex project would force you to practically rewire your brain in the ways that you attack a mathematical problem. If only because there's so much more that you have to manage as a programmer in this situation. Not to mention the fact that this objectively takes way longer to actually plan out and implement, even if you're an expert in x86 assembly. Our example written in C took only 6 lines to write, but its equivalent in x86 assembly was 12. So not only is the logic more sophisticated, but the actual amount that you're writing is twice as long in this case. And this problem only gets worse the larger the project is. Here is another example of C code that uses more advanced computer science concepts, that you would likely need to know in order to program a game like this. You don't need to understand what the code itself is actually doing, but notice that this segment is just short of 50 lines here, and that when we take a look at its assembly equivalent, we see that we've now reached just over 200. That's four times the amount of written code that we would have to do. Time is just as important of a resource for a programming project as anything else, and the fact is that coding and assembly requires an exponential amount of more time doing logic design and writing than you would with a traditional high-level language. This is why I consider the original Roller Coaster Tycoon to be such a triumph. Chris Sawyer was able to craft an exceptional simulation game through a language that literally defies common mathematical logic, and demands way more time and effort to put together. 
Now, I should mention, a lot of older games were actually written in assembly back in the day, pretty much up until the arrival of the original PlayStation, believe it or not. The difference between those games and Roller Coaster Tycoon is project complexity and robustness. Look, I love the original Final Fantasy and Mario games as much as the next guy, but the core gameplay systems that those games had in the 80s and early 90s are nothing compared to the layers that Roller Coaster Tycoon has. With everything from creation tools to the management systems, and even to the interactions with hundreds of NPCs, there's so much going on in a given moment in this game. That's not to diminish the success of Final Fantasy, Zelda, or Mario, or whoever back then. Anything hand-coded in assembly is an impressive feat to me. But it's just that the sheer complexity behind Roller Coaster Tycoon makes it that much of a more impressive final product to me. Now, you may be wondering, why? Why would Chris Sawyer even want to do this in the first place if coding in a high-level language is so much more convenient? Well, I think it's important to understand that all high-level code is actually compiled by your computer into assembly. And that compiler makes special optimizations behind the scenes to output assembly that's more likely to be efficient than anything a human could write. However, human-written assembly code will always run faster if the person writing the code has extensive knowledge and understanding that would surpass the output of the compiler. The thing is, people with this degree of knowledge are few and far between. So it's probably best in most cases to stick with a high-level language, unless your job is unique. Chris Sawyer is one of these people. His implementation of Roller Coaster Tycoon was optimized in such a way that allowed for the game to run on weaker hardware, and brought him both the reach of his audience and his selling profit. Not to mention that there are also next to no bugs in the final product, at least any that are game-breaking, which is once again astounding given the complexity of the code. That's not something you always got back on the NES. I mean, it's impressive that the original Final Fantasy was written in assembly to begin with, but let's be honest with ourselves, that game's busted. There are so many coding issues in that game that render some character attributes useless, and the sheer difficulty of assembly may have contributed to those bugs. If you look at it on the outside, Roller Coaster Tycoon just seems like a well-made simulation game with an unremarkable development history. I mean, there were no moments of project turmoil or any real setbacks at all from what I could find. No, what makes Roller Coaster Tycoon stand out is how Chris Sawyer created the final product we know and love today. And I don't think those kind of things get recognized enough in the gaming industry. It's an achievement in not just simulation level design, but also true computer science and time and dedication. In an age where we're surrounded by graphical powerhouses in the AAA space, it's important to remember that sometimes the gems created by the smallest teams can carry just as much technical prowess, and in my opinion, Chris Sawyer and Roller Coaster Tycoon will always be the prime example of that.